Hello everybody. In the last video we flipped our rear axle and raised our front steering knuckles and we ended up dropping the whole frame by about 11 inches. In this video we're going to focus on steering, clutch, and shift linkage and I'll be popping in every now and then to help move things along. So let's get right into it with steering. As of right now I have my steering plate centered but I'm going to turn it all the way to one direction find out where my steering linkage crosses through the frame and make a mark then I'll turn it all the way in the other direction find out where it crosses the frame make another mark and that'll be the gap that I need to cut out of the side so we can slide our steering linkage through the frame so on this side we're going to come just behind the engine plate and I'll turn it the other direction looks like we need to cut a fairly small little rectangle right there and I think I could easily just use these as my guide just connect this hole with this oval slot right here and come down about an inch and make that a rectangle right there Alright, we've got our access hole cut into the side of the frame, we've got our steering linkage cut in half. The linkage is bolted on tight on the steering plate as well as on the steering knuckle ball joint up here. So what I'm going to do is line these up. I got a bolt shank that's been beveled. I beveled both of these ends. I'm going to weld the bolt shank in and then we'll just clamp the welds and paint it like nothing ever happened. Do that on both sides. Not exactly identical, but everything seems to line up. It's got clearance. We can full turn left, full turn right. So I'm going to unbolt these linkages, put a full bead around both of those joints, and then put everything back together. There we have it. We've got our steering plate bolted onto our steering linkages, which are extended and bolted onto our knuckles. I got it pretty well aligned. I don't think I'll have to make any big changes. And I'll be able to use all the stock steering equipment, the shaft, the gears, all that stuff. One last thing I need to do, two last things I need to do, I need to reinforce the frame right here. That should keep the frame from twisting too much and jamming that spot up. Other than that, I need to take these rods back off, paint them so they don't rust. And we'll be finished with the steering. To reinforce the side of the frame here, I got some quarter inch round stock. I'm gonna bend it into the shape of this rectangle, but a little bit larger so it can sit just outside that hole and I'll put some weld all around it that should strengthen it back up enough to keep the frame from twisting or collapsing.
steering all finished up, at least until I can get the console back on there, the next thing I did was move on to the engine. I knew right off the bat I was going to have to cut the engine pulley down since the secondary pulley runs about four inches below our drive belt line. But when I cut it down, I realized that the center shaft of the pulley is actually hollow tubing and I was going to need a pretty thick, strong washer for the bolt that holds the pulley on there. To make the washer, I used quarter by two flat strap, cut it into a two inch square, and then kept cutting off the corners until it was fairly round and finished it off with a grinder. a washer and there's the engine pulley reinstalled with our quarter inch washer the original stock washer stock bolt and that should still be just inside the frame Well, I plopped the engine down in there, and as you can see, the head is sitting right on top of the axle, which is keeping our engine plate from sitting flush. So what we're gonna do is build a couple risers out of some of the quarter by two flat strap. We'll raise this engine up about an inch and a half to two inches, make a couple trapezoids, and then bolt it back in place. To resolve the pulley issue with raising up the engine, I'm gonna be able to flip the pulley upside down and that'll drop the pulley on the shaft about two inches. So whatever distance that pulley drops down the shaft is gonna be the distance we need to raise the engine up so that it'll still stay in line. Right now the top of my pulley is a half inch down from the bottom of the engine plate. So after we flip this pulley, we'll see what the difference is, and then that's what we need to raise our engine by. All right, so we went from a half inch to two and an eight. So that's inch and a half and an eighth, inch and five eighths. So we just need to build some risers for the engine that are 1 and 5 eighths inches tall and that'll keep our pulleys aligned in the frame.
All right, so I got four tabs cut. They're all inch and three eighths, and there's gonna be a quarter inch thick plate sitting on top. That's where I'm gonna get the extra two eighths to make the inch and five eighths that we need. So I made a jig. I'll be able to set this here and have consistent angles on all of my risers. And I got a few spots ground down right here so I can get a good clean weld. And what I'm gonna do is get these tacked in place first and then I'll measure out what I need for the top, cut those to length, and then set them up there, tack them in place, set my engine up here, make sure everything lines up right, everything's level and straight, and once I confirm that, I'll pull the engine back off, weld everything solid, then put the engine back up here, mark the spots for my engine mounts, and then drill the holes, and we should be good to go after that. washer on the top side, I'll put it through the engine, and on the bottom side I'll put another washer and a locking nut. We've got all four bolts tightened down. Everything looks to be free and clear. There's just the tiniest little gap under our head to clear our axle. All right, we've got our engine pulley in the front, lined up with our axle pulley in the rear. Now it's time to get our clutch and idler pulley right in the middle. Before we flip the axle, the clutch assembly was mounted right back here, just above and in front of the rear axle. But since that's covering that location now, I'm gonna shift it forward about six or eight inches, 
and I'm going to drill new mounting holes on both sides of the top frame and I'll use the original hardware to mount this back in place. We'll have to make some adjustments on our clutch linkage and obviously on our shift linkage since that has been displaced to the other side of the frame. For right now, we're just going to focus on the clutch, getting that all functional, and then we'll work on shift linkage. So as you can see, I've shortened and re-welded that clutch linkage right there. And now, we have full motion of our clutch. So let's put a belt on there and see where everything lines up and see where we need to put our idler pulley. So with our clutch in the resting position, our belt is rubbing on the guard for our clutch pulley right here. So that's what we need our idler pulley to spread that out just a little bit so when we release the clutch, it's not rubbing up against our drive belt right there. So I'd originally mounted this idler pulley from the bottom side up, but with our lack of ground clearance now, I'm going to need to mount it from the top side down. And to cover this up, we'll just create a bridge in the bodywork be able to hide this piece. So I'll slide it in there. And right about there is where we want it. It gives us enough space between our belt, it's not going to rub. And we have full tension once the clutch is released. So the only thing I need to do to really make this right is it's about 3 8 of an inch too low. So I'll need to get some spacers, bring this up 3 8 of an inch and then I can weld that in place. All right, I got my spacers made. I just need to slide them in here. I can tack them in place once I get everything lined up and then I'll drill the holes out so I can bolt this up to it. I'm just going to throw my jacket over the engine so I don't start any accidental fires. And that should do just fine. Now, now I can put a tack on my plate, make sure everything's squared up, put a full bead and then drill the holes for my are the pulley plate. All right, looks good. I'm going to pull this out of the way, put a full bead down both sides of these brackets. And then I'll lay this back on there and mark the hole so I can drill it out. Now we'll slide our idler pulley assembly back in there. That looks about straight right there. I'm going to put a little mark in each hole and then drill them out and I can bolt this piece up and we'll be one step closer.
All right, we've got our idler pulley in there. Everything is clearing, functioning well. I might have to go with one inch larger on the belt, but we'll just have to wait and see how that works out. There might be enough slack to keep it from rolling, but I'm not sure. So one of the last things I need to address on this rear end before we tie it up is this extra stabilizer mount right here. It's got a bushing about an inch long, but as you can see, there's still a gap about a half inch thick between the frame and where that bushing is supposed to sit. So what I'm gonna do is weld a small washer onto the flat side of a flange nut, and that'll give me just enough space where I can weld that washer nut combination to the frame right here. And it'll basically just be an extra spacer for the bolt to go through so we can tie the front side of our transmission into the frame to prevent any rolling of the axle. All right, so I got my new spacer welded up, cleaned up. I got the old spacer bushing, and I'm replacing the factory bolt with a slightly longer bolt. I'll get everything bolted up in there so I make sure our new spacer is in the right spot before I weld it up. Then I'll put a tack on it, pull the bolt out, and then put a full bead around it. That's the last bolt for our transmission tightened up. So the last thing I need to do to this before I start going back on with all the body parts is get my shift linkage situation handled. I'm going to use the original shifter lever and it's going to be mounted up right here on the top side of the frame and the linkage will connect to the bottom side of the shifter on our transmission. To stabilize the bar I've created a spacer right here that I'm going to be able to weld to the frame and this bar will go through it and I'm going to cut a little piece out of this that's going to weld on the other side of the frame right here so it'll be able to add a little bit of stability having two points of contact. shifter all hooked up we got two brackets welded to the frame right here and we got our linkage connected to the transmission so right now we're in reverse all the way back there's neutral first second third fourth fifth six all the way back reverse neutral so we have all of our gears next thing I'll do and I think I'm gonna leave this where it's at for now until I can set the body on there and find out where's the best place to have my shifter. The last thing I need to do before I go back on with the body is make some keepers for the rear pulley to keep the belt from falling off. So what I've done is take some quarter by two flat strap, I drilled two holes in it, and I took some old keepers from the front side of the engine, trimmed them down a little bit, and bolted them on here. So this plate is gonna sit on the inside of the frame on the bottom of the channel. I'll weld it in place and then I'll install these once it's on there because they're going to sit about a quarter inch away from that rear pulley. That looks pretty good right there. I'm going to make a quick mark, remove the rear axle, and then I'll weld that in place.
Well, my drive belt might be an inch short and maybe I don't have a steering wheel. But outside of that, it's pretty much almost kind of drivable. In the next video, we'll be piecing the body back together on the frame. If you like what you see, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you got something on your mind and subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Well, that's not bad.